Are you tired of staring at a bland terminal when you code? Like this is the default for Mac. What if we could change this? We can very quickly. Let's go and first install iTerm2. That's going to get you started. It's going to be an alternative editor. You click that download button. It'll install onto your Mac. Copy that application to your applications folder and launch it. Next step. Let's go and install something called OhMyZSH. And this is going to be a way to configure and tweak the way that iTerm looks. iTerm comes by default with multiple configurations you can set, but OhMyZSH will take it one step further, allowing you to configure themes, colors, spacing, fonts, etc. So to install it, we'll go to this page, click on that big install button, copy the OhMyZSH curl script here. It will fetch it from the GitHub repo, you can install it quite quickly in that one liner, and then you're ready to rock and roll. There is a GitHub page here you can see for more options as far as installation if you want to use different methods. Just make sure this ZHS version outputs something that will be the version you want to use. I have iTerm installed already. We'll go ahead and switch to it. I do have my favorite editor already installed and it's going to be called Spaceship. And this is gonna take the look and feel of what you see over here on my screen. It's gonna be like just listing files, et cetera, out, and you're able to see a unique color scheme based on some presets I have already set. You can customize yours to be anything you'd like under the sun. Of course, the requirements before we begin, you need to install ZSH, and that was something we did in the previous step, so make sure that's done first. Then you can check that version if you want to Copy and paste this line here, go into your code, you should have something that outputs uh, to get the effect in order. I have 5.9, I believe. Also, you need the Powerline fonts or Nerd fonts, and it can install uh, Fira Code is one I particularly use, and it's pretty much the one I default to. So it might look something like this when you echo this out. Uh, it gives you these nice little characters if you want to do something like that that kind of symbolize Git control. So if you're using Git in your projects, which hopefully you are, uh, you'll see little prompts and figures that come back in the typeface that will compensate for that. So actually installing this, I you could use anything from Homebrew to oh my ZSH, uh, all these different configurations. I found the ZSH one to be pretty simple and easy to use. You just clone that down, copy and paste this in your terminal, and then the same thing here and it should go ahead and set your theme to the uh, spaceship theme. To edit your ZSHRC file, you'll need to uh, expand your hidden files in your Mac app, and that can be done in several ways. A quick Google should get you there, uh, and it should show your files accordingly. I have a little key command that sets up an alias on my uh, ZSH file that will open up that in my editor, and you can see here my theme is set up. Uh, if you want to copy that file, you can just use this alias at the bottom. I just have it set up to use VS Code. Uh, I'll, maybe another tutorial will show you that code command. With that installed, you should be able to go ahead and update and install the theme. Uh, th that way you're able to configure it as needed and it should output your terminal all ready to rock and roll. So we get a cool, unique looking feel uh, to match this spaceship output. So if you want to get more obvious idea of what this looks like, you can see some uh, video here giving you the aspect and also look on my screen here, you'll get the output so you can see stuff like that. Next, if you want to apply different color schemes for what you can see here, maybe I'll go into a project. We'll have some Git stuff come out. So you have everything from the main branch to the node version. So we have node here. I'm using something called Bun, which is a JavaScript runtime compiler. Um, yeah, there's emoji cons for those, and I'm also on Ruby often, so you see a Ruby gem here, and it shows you the output of the Ruby version, which is part of this project. Since I commonly use Ruby on Rails, this is what's going to output, and it's really dependent on your project. So if you're in PHP world or JavaScript world, you might output something different here. Uh, typically, the get stuff comes first, though, so that's kind of a neat concept. Now again, in iTerm, you'll want to change your settings going into the uh, script or uh, profiles 
menu, open that, and then you can say edit profiles when you click on your default. If you want to set up different profiles, kind of useful if you want to sit, maybe have a, a daytime mode or a nighttime mode. If you want to have multiple uh, profiles, you can do that. Here you can generate everything from different colors. Um, and there are presets here if you want to go into, and you can go into themes or iTerm settings. It gives you other options you can have. Uh, since I'm using the spaceship version on mine, I kind of just gravitate towards they use the defaults, but you can of course tweak things as you need to. So uh, one thing I will say is definitely use a monospace font. Fira code is my favorite. I have it set up to be using a retina version. I'm on a pretty latest and greatest Mac. So you'll see this uh, setup for me particularly. And then characters can, can be tweaked here based on your preferences. Window can change, whatever you want it to do. Uh, having border radius, having slight opacity if you want. Uh, it kind of sets up a different look and feel based on your, again, preferences. And you can go to town here, essentially. So the, big, the biggest things I think you'll change are the fonts and the colors and then maybe the window patterns. Uh, mine's set in like a minimal mode with tabbing. You can change that to be anything. Uh, by default, I think it has a top bar. You can see a silver bar up there. I, I turned mine off personally. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was useful. This should get you going with creating a beautiful iTerm and terminal for your Mac. Uh, if you want to ever install additional plugins, the oh my ZSH library has tons available relative to what you need. You can look here and see how to install each. Uh, a, one I'm pretty much always reach for is like the get plugin. Uh, if you can install it, it will give you some shorthand methods to do things that commonly would take a lot of keystrokes. So something like this, you could get these shorthands to go to town on. So installing one of those, you would open up that ZSH file. Again, it would be at the root of your uh, project. Here you can add custom plugins. You see the ones I have enabled here. And this is like an array of plugins. Again, there's a, if you pay attention to this comment here, using too many will slow down the shell. So you want to definitely pay attention to that. I keep it pretty simple. Ruby on Rails world, so it really makes a difference when you have some of these plugins enabled. But definitely check those out. They're on the GitHub repo. They will save you a lot of time and headache if you want to go in and tweak. The configuration for the spaceship page also has a lot of options here. You can show the time, you can show user, which username you're logged in as on your system, all kinds of stuff, basically sections that give you different prompts that allow you to really change uh, the look and feel of your app based on what you need. So go to town on this. I wouldn't spend crazy amounts of time because obviously at the end of the day, the, the whole goal is to make it really intuitive and easy to use and get you working in your terminal fast. And it sure beats the heck out of this Mac terminal, right? So the goal here was to get rid of this, if I could spell. Yeah, all right. If you like this video, like and subscribe. There'll be more here. I'll be approaching everything from VS Code editing to changing themes there, as well as more on the command line.